AP Calculus AP students, Mr. Record here. We're talking about video number two, example two, covering our topic 5.1. We're really going to get now into the mean value theorem. Let's take a look. So our mean value theorem is where we're going to go next. We're going to start by trying to visualize this a little bit. You just recently may have watched a video about the Rolls theorem. This is a slightly altered version of what Rolls theorem is asking for. A little bit more complex, but I think it's certainly something that we all can probably understand. So let's take a look at here. In the figure to the right, what I want you to do is label the indicated ordered pairs. So it looks like we've got a couple of ordered pairs. They just haven't been quite labeled at this point. So we have an ordered pair here with a, a x value of a, and that lies on a curve called f of x. So why don't we call this guy f of a? And then over here, we've got another point that we can give an x coordinate of b, and therefore his y coordinate would be x, uh, I'm sorry, f of b. Now you want to label a segment whose length is f of b minus f of a. And there's actually a couple of different ways to do this, so I wanted to kind of guide you through a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and to make this a little bit uh, not quite as cumbersome. I'm going to use a dashed line. I'm going to change my color too. And basically, all that you need to do is to put together some kind of a segment that has a y value of f of b at the top and a y value of f of a at the bottom. And I'm just basically labeling the y axis to make that a little more clear. And that would be that particular segment. As you're finishing that up, we're going to talk about the next piece, which is labeling a segment whose length is b minus a. Well, if I decide to put that b minus a segment just to the top of the picture and, and do so in that it will intersect my f of b minus f of a, it's actually going to be a little bit clearer to explain what is it that I wanted to accomplish with that segment that's b minus a. All right, hopefully that makes sense. If you ever get a little bit behind, please go ahead and pause the video and uh, adjust your picture and then just resume when you can. Now it says the quotient f of b minus f of a over b minus a is the blank of the segment joining those two points. Well, I'm hoping that you see that that is just simply the slope. That's what we're looking for in this particular problem or part four. We're talking about the difference of y's over the difference of x's. So we're talking about the slope between the points f, uh, a f of a and b f of b. And they ask that you go ahead and draw in this segment. You can draw it in a variety of ways. If you have a straight edge, that would work pretty darn good. I'm going to use the magic of my smart notebook software and see if I can just kind of draw it in like such and maybe alter it if need be. So I think I've got a pretty good tangent or a pretty good line there that would serve as my line that joins those two points. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty. F prime of C, a derivative mind you, will give the blank of the line blank to the curve F of X at the point blank. Well, you're going to have to draw in some more information here because we don't have a C in this problem. But I'm going to help you a little bit. I'm going to tell you that this C is going to be right about here. It's somewhere between A and B. It doesn't have to be directly in the middle, exactly at the halfway point. But if I eyeball it, it looks like it would be right about there on the curve. Now, hopefully you know by now that F prime of C would be the slope of the tangent line. That's what a derivative is in this class. Always will be. So we have the slope of the line tangent to the curve f of x. And this is going to occur at the point c, f of c. And I know we don't see the f of c on here. I guess it would be right about there, perhaps. But that's what the thing would look like. Now, it says to locate the c value that's guaranteed by the mean value theorem, which we kind of already did in order to answer our part uh, five question. And they want us to go ahead and try to draw that in. So once again, I'll use my line tool. You can use a straight edge, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have access to one. But I'll do my best here 
to draw this, and I want to draw this in a bright orange color. And it would look maybe something like this. Again, I'm kind of eyeballing it. It's tough to draw tangent lines when you're just using even a straight edge and, and eyeballing the tangency point. But I think I did a fairly good job in that picture there because it looks like I've got the tangent line and this purple secant line sharing a pretty clear relationship. And that's going to be addressed in question seven. Those two lines that you have just drawn on the graph of f of x are blank to each other. And hopefully you all agree the answer is parallel. Now, we can conclude this by putting it all together in our number 8 here. And that would be the actual conclusion of the mean value theorem. And it says that there will be two parallel lines. One that goes through the points a f of a and b f of b. Remember, that's where this all started. And then the other one, blank to the curve f of x, at the point blank blank. Well, we want the word tangent to the curve, and that would occur at the point c comma f of c. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you're a little behind in filling out this little close activity, you can you can pause the video. But I think that this is one of the best ways to introduce this all important theorem in calculus. Now we're going to take a look at an example. And if you flip the page there, you see that we have example two now illustrating the mean value theorem. So it's going to read a little bit similar to our typical theorem kind of problems that are related to this topic 5.1. So it's going to start off by saying, determine if the mean value theorem applies to this function f of x equal 3 minus 5 over x on the interval 1 to 5. State thoroughly the reasons why or why not the theorem applies. And if the theorem does apply, find the value of c guaranteed by the theorem. And then visually, what is the mean value theorem trying to find? Draw it in, which we've already talked about. Now you can see if I flip back to the theorem that just occurred after our activity and before this example, this is going to tie in everything together that we want to accomplish in this problem. And the mean value theorem simply states very eloquently, if f is a continuous function on a closed interval and a differentiable on the open interval a to b, then there exists a c in the open interval a, b such that the derivative at c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Basically, if I can get my students to understand that this theorem is just simply saying derivative equals slope, we are going to be able to solve a lot of problems together because that's truly what this is about. Let's return to that example, take the knowledge of this theorem and our activity, and see if we can't solve this guy. So we have to make sure that we state whether or not the theorem applies, right? That's kind of going to go hand in hand. So in this particular problem, it's a mean value theorem problem. We only have two criteria that have to be met. The first criteria is f of x, which is the 3 minus 5 over x, has to be continuous on that closed interval. Well, notice, if I were to stop right there, I have told a lie. I can't say that 3 minus 5 over x is continuous because I know it's not. x equals 0 causes a big problem for this function right here. But I do know that if I continue with the fine print, I only have to state that this function is continuous on the closed interval over which this function is really being analyzed. So that's going to take care of our first criteria. Our second criteria is whether or not this function is going to be differentiable on that open interval. And as we look at this, we notice that the only issue that this function provided was whenever we had a value at x equals 0. Well, because 0 is not on this open interval 1 to 5, I don't have to worry about any kind of uh, break hole, asymptote, jump, or even a sharp turn for that matter. Sharp turns are going to be very characterized by some very special kinds of things that you're going to see in your functions that we'll talk about in a future video. Once I get to this point, I have enough information to move forward with my mean value theorem. So what I'm going to do is take the derivative of my function. 
So the derivative of 3 minus 5 over x, well, if you're having trouble with that, maybe we want to write this as 3 minus 5x to the negative 1. I think he's having a dream there. And the derivative would end up being positive 5x to the negative 2, which of course is the same as 5 over x squared. After that, I need to start investigating, well, what is my slope? What is my f of b minus f of a over b minus 1? Well, keep in mind, your a and b values are 1 and 5 respectively. So I'm going to be computing f of 5 minus f of 1 over 5 minus 1. Now I'm going to have to go back up to my function and very systematically plug in my 5 for x, subtract, and then plug in my 1 for x. And then, of course, the denominator is 4, just waiting to be used. And then I have 3 minus 1 minus 3 plus 5 when I distribute my negative. And when all is said and done, I end up with 4 over 4, which is just positive 1. So I can then finish the problem by simply taking my derivative, setting it equal to my value of my slope. And then at this point, we're going to cross multiply. And we get x squared is equal to positive 5. And then we can finish up by taking the, uh, the square root of both sides. But there's a little bit of a trick here. So you're going to have to pay very close attention. It's very common for students just to robotically go through this process and think, boom, I've got my answers. There's two of them here. I'm going to circle it. I'm all done. But as it turns out, only one of these answers is part of your solution. Only the square root of 5 positive. And the reason is because your answer always has to lie on this interval. In fact, it has to lie on that open interval 1 to 5. Negative square root of 5 is not on that interval. And you can see graphically here, it's not going to be an issue. Now, if I were to look at this graph a little bit more detailed, it says that I'm only concerned with what's happening between 1 and 5. So for all intents and purposes, I, I should really just even forget that all of this part of the graph is even there. So I can kind of wipe that out. You don't need to do that in your notes. But this is really all that we're concerned with. And then in this problem, it says when you get to the square root of 5, which I know is about 2 and, and a little bit of change, it's going to be a point that's somewhere like right around here, where like x marks the spot. Let's do that in a different color than white. And we're basically saying at that point x, if we could try to draw a tangent line as best we can, that tangent line should be perpendicular, or parallel, I should say, to that secant line that joins the two points. And that's exactly what's going on in this problem. Mean value theorem. Just remember, you're taking a derivative and setting it equal to the slope after a couple of conditions have been met, and you can never go wrong with it. Hopefully this helps. We'll see you at the next video.